Okay, so here we are, module 19, equilibrium in the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model. Um, I know I said this a couple PowerPoints ago, but this is extremely important because this is going to show you the graphs, how to label them correctly, how they move, what they tell us, and so on. This is another PowerPoint that you must, must understand. Very, very important. So let's just first talk a little bit about what happens when we shift these curves, all right? When you draw them, when we look at them, and so on. First of all, make sure you label everything correctly. Do not skimp on your labels. On your FRQs, you lose points for mislabels and you gain points if you label correctly, so make sure you get those easy points. Please, please, please draw your arrows. While these are not absolutely required, they make things so much easier. Get in good habits from the start, right? I, I have a hard time telling you, draw your arrows, draw your arrows, because I'm not, I try not to be pushy, but please draw your arrows. Price level affects real values only, right? When price goes up or down, nothing happens to nominal values. It affects real values, okay? Price level goes up, real wages will fall. Price level goes down, real wages will rise, not nominal. Output is inversely related to unemployment. On our graph, our short label for output is Y. When we label the axis, we label it GDP. Output goes up, unemployment goes down, and vice versa. Must, must understand. There we go. And finally, give your graphs room to breathe. Put some space between your lines. Right? Make it nice and easy to look at. You don't need a millimeter between your two curves. All right, so let's take a look at some of these graphs. First of all, we're going to look at changes in aggregate demand. So you can see our graphs are labeled correctly. We have real GDP on the horizontal axis, price level on the vertical axis. Our aggregate demand curve is labeled. Our short run aggregate supply curve is labeled price level, and output. First, let's look at what happens when we have a decrease in aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is going to shift to the left. We label our new curve aggregate demand 1. We have new equilibrium points. We have a new equilibrium price level with an arrow showing it moving down. And we have a new equilibrium output with output decreasing. And with output decreasing, we know that unemployment is increasing. Very good. Now let's look at what happens when we have an increase in aggregate demand. Our aggregate demand curve is going to shift to the right. There is our new aggregate demand curve labeled AD1. Now we have a new equilibrium point. There's our equilibrium price level with an arrow showing an upward movement and our new equilibrium output. We have an increase in output and so we know our unemployment level is doing what? Yes, decreasing. These are changes in aggregate demand. Now, let's look at changes in short run aggregate supply. Again, you can see labeled everything is labeled correctly. Short-run aggregate supply is going to decrease, shift to the left. We have our new short-run aggregate supply curve, correctly labeled. We have a new price level with an arrow showing, indicating inflation. And we have a new output, decreasing. Okay? And now let's look at an increase in short-run aggregate supply. That is a shift to the right. There's our new curve labeled. We have a new equilibrium price level with an arrow indicating it has gone down. And we have a new equilibrium output with an arrow indicating it has gone up. 
And of course, by now, you know what is happening to unemployment. These are the four things that happen with our graph. Later on, we'll add the long-run long aggregate supply curve. But these are the four things that can happen for the most part. Now, let's look at something called demand pull inflation, right? This is inflation caused by an increase in demand. Sometimes you'll hear people say, uh, too much money chasing too few goods, okay? But all this is is an increase in the price level because of increase in aggregate demand. So aggregate demand is increasing. It's going to shift which way? Yes, to the right. We draw our new aggregate demand curve. We draw our new equilibriums. And there you can see price level has gone up. This is inflation. And output has also gone up. Right? This is the situation known as demand pull inflation. And it creates something that we're calling an inflationary gap. This space between the potential, which is long-run aggregate supply, and where the economy is right now is called an inflationary gap. Right? We are working beyond our potential. We are producing beyond our full potential. This is going to become extremely important, as you'll see in a minute. Now let's look at the next type of inflation. This is known as cost push inflation. This is inflation that is caused by a movement of our short-run aggregate supply curve. Which way does short-run aggregate supply move to cause inflation? Yes, it is going to shift to the left. So there's our arrow. We draw our new short-run aggregate supply curve. We have new equilibrium where aggregate supply and aggregate demand intersect. We have an increase in price level, which is what we said. This is known as inflation. And we have a decrease in output. Notice everything is correctly labeled. The graphs have room to breathe. Easy to see what's going on. Okay? So those are two special scenarios that have names. Demand pull and cost push inflation. Next, we're going to look at a demand shock. Okay? Demand shocks can be positive or negative. Here we have an economy that is in equilibrium. The short run and the long run are all matching up. So right now the economy is working to its potential. But something is going to change aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is going to shift to the right. This is an example of demand pull inflation. We have a positive demand shock, we have a new price level, we have a new output, and this is uh, a positive demand shock. How does, it how does the economy respond without any government intervention? Well, the economy likes to get back to long-run equilibrium. And so what happens here, let me go back, right? We're working with an inflationary gap. Prices have gone up. Let's think about this for a minute. With prices going up, what has happened to real wages? Yes, real wages have gotten lower. Okay? What's happened to unemployment? Unemployment has gone down as well. So everybody in the economy is working. Even more people in the economy are working, right? Employment is extremely, extremely low. We went from the natural rate to a very low rate. So if people in the economy feel poorer and everybody's working, who has bargaining power in this economy? Workers do. And if workers start to feel poorer, what do they negotiate for? Higher nominal wages. When nominal wages increase, what happens to our curve here? Nominal wages are a factor of what? Short-run aggregate supply. 
And with an increase in nominal wages, what's going to happen to short-run aggregate supply? Well, you saw it a minute ago. Short-run aggregate supply is going to decrease. We now are back at equilibrium, except we have a higher price level. This is how the economy responds to a positive demand shock on its own without any government intervention. So we work our way back to our long-run equilibrium only at a higher price level, right? And our output goes back to its equilibrium output level. Um, Any time the economy self-corrects with the government taking no action, the short-run aggregate supply curve is the one that is going to move. If the government takes action, the government influences aggregate demand. And again, we're going to get lots of practice with this, but hopefully this makes a little bit of sense to you. Let's look at another example of a negative demand shock. So here we are. We're an economy at equilibrium. The long run, the short run, and aggregate demand are all matched up. And we have a negative demand shock, a decrease in aggregate demand. What happens to price level? Price level goes down. What happens to output? Output goes down. We have created what's called a recessionary gap. Where the economy is working below its full potential. Right? What happens to unemployment when output decreases? Unemployment increases. Lots and lots of people don't have jobs. Now, let's think about how is the economy going to self-correct? Well, we said anytime the economy self-corrects, it's going to be the short-run curve that adjusts. If lots and lots of people are looking for work, what can businesses do with wages? Do businesses need to increase their wages to encourage people to come work for them? No, absolutely not, right? People just want a job. So what happens to nominal wages? Nominal wages can decrease. When wages go down, what's affected? That's an input cost, the number one input cost. And so we have an increase in short-run aggregate supply. And we work our way back to equilibrium. Price level continues to fall. And output moves back to its equilibrium output. Again, if the government takes no action, meaning the economy corrects itself, the short-run aggregate supply curve is going to be the one that shifts. We will do lots of practice with this in class, all right? But it's important, important that you understand this.